Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. What is up? We got Will Kane with us again today. The Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio and coming up a little bit later. Lewis Riddick. Some football stuff. I saw on your show, your show, first take, where they were suggesting Andrew Luck has not lived up to expectation. And that's been a long-running thing here for me. And some people think I'm on an island by myself now, still defending him. So I saw that. We're going to ask Lewis Rick about that because I don't want to be the last guy there. What? On the island of defense? Yeah. You're on the Andrew Luck defense Yeah, that he's, defense that he's still island? good and he'll be okay. And I know it hasn't been great the last couple of years. Uh, you got Max Kellerman with you. You guys can sip... You know, coconut drinks with umbrellas. Well, that's good. It's good to know that Max will be there because I know him. I'm familiar with his work. Uh, I don't want to get bogged down in all the Andrew Luck stuff because that's just sort of a repetitive thing here over and over. It's certainly not where we're going to lead the show. I spent a good chunk uh, of this morning on Sports Center, and we spent you know time talking about LeBron. What have we learned? Game mm. three. Mm. Maybe not Jordan. Maybe not. Uh, legacy update button is gone because that garbage audio that they sent us up from Miami just not not re-rackable. So we can't do that. But we have found production for the pressure cooker. And before we unveil this, okay, hold off. Everybody hold off. Kevin Durant basically said, if you don't like these games, as the Warriors sweep the Spurs last night, moving on to the NBA Finals, they're going to have nine days off. You know what I think he said? What did he say? I think he said, if you don't like it, you can watch The Bachelorette. Super thing. I think some people took him up on it. A lot of people watch The Bachelorette. And I'm telling you right now, some of you people that I work with that are opinion people on the air, <laughs> don't lie to the rest of us. Don't lie to America. You are only watching The Bachelorette. You are not switching back and forth to Game 4, Spurs Warriors. It wasn't a great game. Although I give San Antonio fans, Will, a ton of credit. Down 17, here's a 3 to make it 14. Yeah! Like That crowd was still into it, man. Yeah, that's good. Notice that? But I think or were I you watching up- The Bachelorette? I don't watch The Bachelorette. I have to. Uh, I would be happy to admit that I did, if I do, but I don't. Um, but I just came up with the perfect out for anybody that you think you called out. I, I saw a lot of coworkers. Got them. Got them. Right. You weren't watching the game. You weren't you were watching, watching the, game. the Bachelorette. Which, by the way, they're completely brazen about. They don't care that you find that out. Yeah, but I caught a lot of people doing a, oh, just went over to check out Dave real quick. During a timeout. No, 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 no. You've been watching Dave. But the argument is, Rick. Ryan, the argument is just doing what Katie told me to do. That's right. So Durant said, watch something else. He had to clarify those comments, I guess, yesterday. There's been some some pushback as far as your comments out there saying that, you know, about the playoffs not being competitive. And you said something along the nature of, you know, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Uh, you know, people have some things to say. What's your response to that? I mean, life could be simple, man. If feeling like the way the game is going, just turn it off. If you're enjoying it, just keep it on. I mean, life is simple, man. It's, I mean, I didn't mean it to disrespect anybody, but if you felt disrespected, I'm sorry. But if, if you don't enjoy the game, turn it off, turn something else on. If you do, enjoy the rest of it, man. So, um, you know, hopefully a lot of people watch tonight. It should be a fun one. He's close to cracking. <laughs> oh, you really? <laughs> Okay, well, here we go. The He's NBA close. playoffs on ESPN voice. Radio. Tune in tonight is LeBron and the Cavs host Marcus Smart and the Celtics. Who's writing these? Did Tommy write this? Well, it had Isaiah Thomas in there, so I had to throw another name. Okay, fair. And he was really good in Game 3. That's presented by Dell. Coverage begins at 730 Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. There is no question Durant is at the top, right, of the player with the most pressure on him right now to win a title? I mean, I'm not going to joke around with you, even though he does sound close to cracking. That voice? I'm telling you, Kevin Durant, reaching the end of his rope. Just everybody be ready. All right, so we found All it's going to take is one loss in the finals, and then <laughs> the top blows off this thing. But in all seriousness, oh, man, it, it is that... in close. It is in close. There's nobody. The, the second place finish on this pressure cooker uh, race we're having is yes. so far back. He's barely visible in the rearview mirror. Kevin Durant has far and away the most pressure on him. Okay, so that means we are going to – we went – so Rudy found this back in our – production archives this is from 06 mike and mike nba top five pressure cooker rankings this based is, on need to win a ring yeah we well, found it's a time, this. time 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 yeah. time 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 on this radio thing 
when you sent the pre-production note, yes. I thought you this was your invention. No, that no, you no. came up with I've stolen this. This is a decade old Mike and Mike. Sarudi's like bit. the guy Sarudi's like the guy that's a DJ, but he's only into forty fives. He's like, Oh, the Thelonious Monk sample is perfect. It'll go right into I can't even follow Thelonious Monk up. But you found this through the archives, just sifting, <laughs> blowing the dust off of him. You were somewhere like right. in the attic at ESPN looking through let me find through the old CD beta. tapes. Yes. Yep. All right, you Look ready? Bits and you found this one. Yeah, so 06 Mike and Mike. Let's update this. Which NBA star is under the most pressure? Dude, you're making my blood pressure boil. Ah! It's the NBA pressure cooker. How hot is it in here right now? That's awesome. That is awesome. There's so many awesome That's things. Blade right Runner? Now. I don't even want to go down the list yet. I just want to talk about how you remembered, first of all, the Mike and Mike pressure cooker. When was, how wait, could you ever forget that? The first time how, it was live? <laughs> when was the last time it was used? I, I understand it's a decade old. And once you, Gilbert Arenas got out of the first round? Did they use it last year? No. no. Oh, my God, no. Two years ago? No, this is old. This is coming back in. You, you're you like, you were into the Ramones before anybody was into the Ramones. You knew the pressure cooker before anybody knew the pressure cooker. Ryan Russillo Show, Will Kane today, brought to you by Upside. Now save big on travel and get a big gift card every trip you buy. You'll love Upside.com, Upside.com. Give me your list, one through five. You really want to get to the serious part of this, the list? Yeah, because we got like a minute left. You're bad with clocks. It's, Will Kane, good with content. That's a floating break. That's a floating break. I, see? No, this Radio isn't Mike and Mike. you got to get out of that world. They go another 12 minutes. My list. We're going to start from top, get to five, because number one, so obvious, KD. There's no point in debating it. And second, by the way, distant. On the same team, Draymond, number two. In fact, I could say three is Clay and four is Iguodala and five is... Is Steph? Steph, yes. That's your top five. I'm pressure, but I'm what not. What about David West, though? He did join them and doesn't have a ring. People need to stop throwing David West under the bus, okay? You and I'm Pop, not, just stop with that. All right. Quit putting more pressure on David West. Um, number three, James Harden. James Harden. Number four, Russell Westbrook. And number five... This is where I want to see what your reaction is. I'm going to watch your face intent on this one. Anthony Davis. So LeBron's not even on your list? Mm -mm. Durant is so number one. As we do it out loud, I feel like we should have saved the production for NFL quarterbacks. The NBA pressure cooker. Yes, we could just change the NFL part out. I have Curry, too. What? He's already won an MVP and a title. Two MVPs. One was unanimous. May have heard about it. <laughs> that was the one I forgot. <laughs> I personally don't feel this way, but his rep, like his, the stakes are higher for Steph. Like I could put John Wall on here. I don't see him in this group. I could put Kawhi here. He's already got a ring. I don't really see him necessarily in this constant debated who is this guy really and right. curry has it has to like reclaim some of this but even if he gets this done then people aren't going to fully accept him even though he already got one on his own i'll go three lebron because it's still always lebron at some point you can't do it without him on here harden i probably wouldn't even have put on this list but i'm putting him at four even though the expectations are for him to win a ring when the season starts every year but it was so bad in game six he's going to have to do something miraculous to get that stain off of his resume and five i'll go russ i i understand what you're doing with anthony davis but i think you not having any lebron on there as if it's just huge just egregious right right almost not even submittable (laughs) i think anthony davis's pass is over yeah but i think 30 wins 40 wins that's a good way of bringing it up because like i didn't even have chris paul on there because i feel like people are already over it now you think that no? You think they're over that with Anthony Davis? I think they've been giving him passes. No, no, no. I, I meant like I'm Anthony with you on Davis Paul. is re- yes. replaced. Like Chris Paul isn't even disappointing anymore. As much as people just accepted that this kind of like last year, he's on this list, no question. Totally agree. Maybe before the playoffs started this year. You know why? Chris Paul's expectations have dropped. Life's about expectations. No longer expected of Chris Paul. You can watch all three hours of the show, Priscilla Show, right here on ESPN News. My expectations for the next time we do that will be lower. Okay, we got super team. Everybody thinks I was telling you yesterday why this is sort of a cyclical thing, a perfect storm, if you will, of events that led to these two super team. Could we actually see more as they try to catch up? A theory on that that we're doing now. Will Kane, right here on ESPN Radio.
Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans proudly supports Rosillo and Cadell when it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender. It's important to work with someone you can trust who has your best interest in mind. With Rocket Mortgage, you get a transparent online process that gives you the confidence you need to make an informed decision. Skip the bank, skip the waiting, and go completely online at quickenloans.com forward slash Rosillo. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Lewis Riddick on how he handles being a former player and a former member of a front office when it comes to player holdouts because a big name is not showing up, doesn't want to work out, wants a new contract. Will Kane with us on the Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. We also have some Little League baseball, soccer mom, dad, slash breakdown. Yeah. Is someone calling in? No. I'm, we I'm, should take calls from soccer moms and some soccer dads. Maybe at the back end of that, we not should. right now. Yeah, we should. We should get. You uh, should get Adnan on the phone, right? He's a soccer youth coach. Is that what he is? No, no, no. He's a little league baseball. Baseball. Coach. They got into the playoffs. They're uh, one and nine, one and eight, yeah. one and eight. They're the nine seed. I want to break down the different kind of dads on the side. I wish he were here. I wish Adnan was just floating around where we just have him come in studio and we would do this, but. Who knows? Maybe he will. He gets bored sometimes. Just show up and come into work. We are, we're not boys yet, I don't think, but I think we're professional friends. Does it bother you? You just said something to me that makes me respect you less. No. Okay. You are, you brought this up in our pressure cooker, cooker segment because it, it was, it was intense, but you put Anthony Davis on that list yes. and I get that. But like, are you like, we're like, I'm not hundred percent sure where I'm at with you right now. Are you one of those guys that like thinks Anthony Davis is kind of overrated? I feel like you're not really talking about me right now. I feel like I'm talking about a lot of people. <laughs> I feel like I'm wondering if you're I, I feel like we've become such boys that you're actually using me as a proxy to say you respect me less, but you're really talking about other people. That's what I feel like. Well, going if on you're right in now. this group, <laughs> if you're in this group, it could just be this boat floating by that. <laughs> Would be the, it would be a boat named the boat Ryan respects Name the boat. less. Name the boat. Name the boat. Name the boat. <laughs> no, I, I, I just think the Anthony Davis hype train has to pay off at some point. I think Anthony Davis is great, and I don't want you or anybody else to box me into this position of, well, you think Anthony Davis is trash. You know, That's clearly not what I'm arguing. I just think that a great player has to, even when surrounded by less than average players, pay off more than 30 to 40 wins at some point. And I think James Harden's done that. I think Russell Westbrook's done that. I do think those guys have more around them than Anthony Davis does, but they've also far exceeded what he has, what he's accomplished. And I just, I think Anthony Davis is great and his team should start reflecting how great that is at some point. If it doesn't, I don't know what we have to say about it. Right. I think the playoff run a couple years ago though, getting in the way they got in like that in itself, even though it didn't mean anything because you end up losing the first round. Like, that to me is a sign of his greatness and the fact his front office, I think in the beginning I got their mistakes, the the other mistakes that don't make any sense. I'm just I'm just not there yet, all right? All right? Hey, look, somebody just tweeted me, Anthony Davis's career path and Andrew Luck's career path are eerily similar. Yeah, we've done that before. Yeah? Nothing and, new here. Mike and Mike, pressure cookers from 10 years old. Yeah. <laughs> it's about new content, unless it's a recycled beat. Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE network. So Barkley was on yesterday. Mike and Mike just talking about super teams nonstop. I thought Izzy Gutierrez and Izzy in Spain on ESPN Radio brought up a point that like we're already starting to realize that we thought we were being plain and boring by predicting another Cavs-Warriors finals. What about next year? We're not going to be fooled again, are we? Like next year, I don't know what Boston can do to be really that interesting. I don't know if San Antonio can maybe you know dangle LaMarcus Aldridge out there and improve their team and maybe some improve their depth by getting rid of him. Um, but we're going to have the same stories next year. So here's the question. If I'm on the air yesterday telling you this is a perfect storm of events, cyclical, that I don't think will be repeated anytime soon because of what LeBron was able to pull off and how specific all these things had to be for this Warriors team to fall in place, including an increasing cap and an underpaid star in Curry, is there an argument made on the other side that actually more and more of these guys will just team up to try to combat what we've seen the last three years, and especially this year? No, because you were spot on yesterday. It'll be harder to do that because of the designated player exception. And what will happen will be it won't be the A players like Kevin Durant moving to create these behemoth super teams. It will be the, what what should we call them, 1As, the Bs. It'll be Not so super teams? It will will be Paul George. It'll be a Paul George type as opposed to a Kevin Durant type who is now going somewhere to try to create a super team. I'm not saying Paul George is going to do that, but that's what it would take for this to be repeated. 
So what are we saying here, Saruti? So this for me stemmed yesterday when I was listening to Barkley on Mike and Mike, and he was like, oh, I don't want to see you know Chris Paul go to the Spurs. I want him to stay in L.A. And I'm like, and I was thinking to myself, actually, no, I do, I do want to see him go to the Spurs because then that would at least give their more competition out west for the Warriors. I want to see like Gordon Hayward and Jimmy Butler go to the Celtics to challenge. Like I, I think the answer to the super teams problem is more super teams, not less super teams, if that makes sense. Man, I actually agree with you. And I, as someone who has hated what's happened with the Warriors, I think what we need, we hate the existence of two dominant teams. We like the existence of four to five dominant teams. We need... We definitely need the conference finals to be competitive, and we'd like some of the semifinals to be like Boston-Washington. And how do you do that? It is Boston becoming a super team. It is San Antonio or Houston stepping up to be able to be comp- more competitive with the Warriors. And in, that may take Paul George choosing the Spurs. The Paul George one, if you just looked at it, Paul George, let's just use him as an example. Going to the Lakers, which everybody keeps saying over and over again, he may want to be in L.A. He may love the Lakers. He may love the, the whole idea of it. He's basically guaranteeing himself he's never going to be able to compete for a ring. And that's look, How old is Paul George? 28? 27. Just turned 27. So, right, you're, you're right there. Look, if Lonzo is terrific, if something happens with his traffic, maybe one more pick when they're trying to figure this whole thing out, maybe Paul George doesn't go there until a little bit later. But I like what Sarudi's saying. I like what you're saying, that, that maybe... The byproduct isn't that, well, this never happens again. Maybe it means that players go, hey, the money I can still make up somewhere else. He is a signature shoe guy, which, again, there there aren't that many of them, and everybody loves Paul George's shoe. Would it make more sense for him? Like, I, I can't imagine you go to Cleveland, but would he go, I need to find a way to align myself with one of these guys and still get blasted out in the first round? Because I can go do the Pacer thing with the Lakers, and it'll be a cooler city. But it doesn't mean anything for my career. Well, God help if it's, if it's Cleveland. That's not what we want. That's not what we're talking about. It can't be continued to be these two teams. It can't. So you're be talking. These two teams. A, it has to be three, four, five teams. Well, why not let me take it even <laughs> even step further? Though? That's because that doesn't solve our problem. That's not solving the problem. That's exacerbating it. But Ryan, I think what you told us about yesterday, your moment in time theory, your little window of opportunity between the old NBA contracts. And the new NBA contracts, I, I, I'm in. You're right. The problem that now creates for the next level super teams being created is they're having to gamble on B level players, right? Jimmy Butler, by the way, wouldn't count. He's a he, he. The Bulls would have designated player exception on Jimmy Butler. So you have to find the 15 to 30 ranked player to now create your super team around or add to your your existing team, which really isn't a super team, which, which was really isn't point. right. <laughs> Imagine if George went. Well, he can't go to the Warriors. I mean, I'm not trying to. Oh my God, here, right? All right, coming up next, Lewis. Would everybody Riddick. defend him like they would Durant? By the way, would you say, "Oh man, he just wants to win a championship"? Just how about that? <laughs> well, Paul George goes to the Warriors. Where are you, Srudy? You just going to clap that along too? No, but if Paul George went to the Spurs, I'd be like, okay. I res- what if I he went to the, the hell out of that? What if Paul George? No, was- it can't go to one of those two teams. <laughs> okay, he, there needs. So the I, Will and I are on the same page. There needs to be more than two. <laughs> there needs to be more than two. All right. All right. gonna, I just want you to know I'm calling hypocrisy on the Durant thing if you're not going to extend it to George. He he's more mad about the Durant thing than anybody that works on he the is? show. Okay. So he's not a pro Durant. Doesn't mean I hate him. I just don't like what he did. Okay. Hey, don't worry. He won't he won't hear about it. Oh, we can line him up. The Durant defenders on his Golden State move. I want you to tell me if it's okay if George goes there too. <laughs> All right, coming up next. Uh he's as big a name as there is on defense, and he doesn't want to play football right now. Lewis Riddick will be discussing that. Will Kane and I right here on the Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. I'm really excited for Will Kane's parenting breakdown for uh, soccer. Although I almost had my rundown mixed up here where it says 12-year-old chokes out. And I'm like, wait a minute, what does that have to do with the soccer dads? But no, that was an MMA bout. 12-year-old beat a 24-year-old. Oh. Did you not know that? Well, my son did it this weekend in soccer too, so I was confused too. I was like, oh, we're going to do that? There's oh, a 24-year-old in the radio. kid's soccer deal? The kid plays up. You 24s. <laughs> we're trying to. 
Trying to get him a college scholarly. All right. Lewis Riddick's with us. The Rosilla Show, Will Kane, ESPN Radio. There are times when I think, Lewis, about Andrew Luck, and I wonder if I'm going to be the last guy defending him. And right now, NFL.com, the rankings, the top 100 players, they have him at 51. First take was even asking today in the graphics, like, has he lived up to expectations? Where do you now see Luck at his stage in his career? You know, it's funny. We just had a meeting and talking about him. We're going to talk about him this afternoon. Um, as far as whether or not we thought he was still ascending or not, and that he had, had we seen the best of him. I still think you'll still see more out of Andrew as the rest of this football team gets better also. Look, there, there's, a, there's certain things that you can't quantify with, with players and with quarterbacks in particular. When they know that they have an inordinate amount of pressure on them, it really, there is something to the whole trying to do too much thing. And when you have a defense that over the past two years like theirs has been, that is abysmal, that you know you're going to have to put up points, you know you don't have a running game, you know that you don't really commit to the run because the offensive line isn't good enough, and you put all this pressure on you, it makes you sometimes play outside of even what your talent level is. And with his, there's nothing he can't do. So I think as the team gets better around him, I think you will see Andrew's efficiency improve. You may not see his numbers get better, per se, as far as yardage, yards per attempt, but I think you'll see passer rating. I think you'll see situational football improve with him. I think there's a lot more to gain with him still that isn't just on him that will be dependent upon what happens with the rest of the team. Right, because we've done this before. All right, We know the offensive line and what it's been. Mm-hmm. We know the defense you know, compared to some other things. But as long as I'm always kind of just questioning my position on it, I wonder if his success early, because I still can't believe him right into the league, that Colts team wins, that gets to the playoffs. Sure. And like I can't believe this. But in a way, can't that actually hurt the way a player is perceived? No because question. Because it felt like he was ahead of schedule. No question. See, from there, they think that that's the floor now. Everyone thinks that's the floor, and everything has to be up, up, and away from there. But it's not just, you know, the football and how a guy is perceived as far as his performance is not just directly linked to raw numbers. There's there's more. It's such an interdependent game, and ultimately what guys are really going to be judged on is winning, since that's what we like to use when we want to uh, justify some quarterbacks being ranked higher than others. We say that they're winners. That's, why we, that's how we talk about Eli Manning, right? We don't look at Eli Manning's numbers and say he's great. We look at his Super Bowl wins and say, well, he deserves to be among the elite of the elite. Well, with Andrew, that's where now I think his game is really going to be, or how his game is really going to be judged. Is, is Indianapolis really a true conference contender and Super Bowl contender? And again, that comes back to this team getting better. That's an interesting analysis that Andrew Luck has suffered from trying to do too much. What other players, what other examples, maybe just quarterbacks, can you point to in history that have suffered from trying to do too much, playing outside of their talent? Level? Yeah, you know what? I, I think if you go back... Think of, um, look, I played against Dan Marino when he was in Miami when the defenses maybe weren't as good as they should have been, where maybe the offense wasn't as balanced as it could have been, and he had to do everything for that football team. Um, and But did that diminish his uh, No, I don't, I don't want to say, it, let, let's just say it maybe didn't, it didn't allow it to be maybe as good as it would have been had the football team been more well-rounded, okay, from an efficiency standpoint. Um, in the league right now, other quarterbacks who try to do too much. I mean, sometimes I believe that Cam Newton is, you can put him in that category because, and they, they probably ask him to do too much. Maybe it's not him trying to do too much. They ask him to do too much. You cannot be the primary ball carrier. You can't be running the football and quarterback power on the goal line like they ask him to do. And then at the same time, dice people up on third down. It just doesn't work that way. So I think he's one of those guys you have to be careful with in that respect. Um, Andrew, you know, it's interesting, you know, Aaron Rodgers, people would say, well, you know what, they ask him to do a lot and he delivers. Well, who knows? Maybe maybe Andrew Luck can do those kinds of things as he continues to progress here through his career. But there are certain ones. Cam would probably be the most, the one that both stands out for me as trying to do too much. I think Tony Romo was an example of that. The minute the Cowboys reined it in, started running the ball more, he became a better quarterback. No question. He was asked to do less. He was a better quarterback. That's that's a great example, quite honestly. It would have been great to see how he would have done in this offense if some of his raw numbers may have come, come down as far as passing yardage, maybe touchdown th- uh, throws would have come down. But had he gotten them to a Super Bowl, we would have put him in a whole different category, which is, it makes sense. We're talking with Lewis Riddick here. Aaron Donald, probably the best defensive lineman, interior defensive lineman there is in the NFL. He's not going to show up until he gets a new deal. How do you balance 
both you as the former player and mm-hmm. you as the former front office member. Mm-hmm. How do you handle this kind of thing when you understand his goal and the team's goal? As a former player, Aaron, don't even go don't go near a football field until you sign a contract. As a front office guy, you don't have to come in. I know we know what you need. We know where you stand. We're going to take care of you. You know, Ryan, there's at, at some at certain points in time, it's not just about business. It's about just doing what's right. This kid's a freak. He's dominant. And he has no issues off the field. You know what the market is. We're not going to sit here and haggle over this. We're going to make you one of the highest paid players, defensive players ever. So let's just get it done. So I wouldn't have any issue. I'd be like, hey, stay wherever you are. We know you're going to come in here ready to roll. We'll get this thing worked out. But Period. what is he doing, Lewis? Is he protecting himself or is he gaining leverage? At what point does sitting out actually start I don't, to help? His I don't. I don't think at this point he doesn't need leverage. Yeah. If I'm if I'm the GM, if I'm less needed, the Rams, Aaron doesn't need to do anything to leverage me. I'm leveraging myself because I already know what I've got and I already know what it's going to take to sign him. And quite honestly, this isn't one of those deals where I'm actually trying to get him at a bargain. I'm really not. There's certain guys who you would kind of like hold hold a firm ground with and maybe say, "Hey, look, I'm only going to this number, maybe." And you need to get in here and show us that you're... Aaron's not that guy. I don't need to play games with him that way. I know the money's going to be Indominus Sue Von Miller money. I know it's going to be $20 million maybe a year. I know it's going to be $70 million plus guaranteed. We already know. That's where we're starting. We'll get it done. Good to see you, man. Thanks. You got it. Thanks. All right, that's Lewis Riddick. Coming up next, it happened with the Cubs, and it's happening again now, and it makes way less sense. The Rosillo Show. With Lewis Riddick earlier, giving you the straight talk. Brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Will Kane here at ESPN Radio. Whenever we do this shot, we come back in the camera over here. Uh, those who are watching on ESPN News, obviously millions listening on ESPN Radio. The Rosilla Show with Will Kane today. I always think about that A-Rod thing that happened last week when he's in the booth and he's getting ready and they yes. zoomed in on his notes. And I can't imagine, I guess it was real and the notes said what? Baby and then question mark and it was... Birth, birth control, control have it or have baby mm, it was even worse right? you? yeah yeah i actually let me shut up Don't i'm, get, I'm being told right now not to say it really oh 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 i can't well, so he just a, told you in his air on the air form of let's just say i hope this works out right can't yeah. say that freeze pops yeah it implies something well it more than implies it it says specifically this is what is supposed to be done. <laughs> now that I think about what just happened here, I think it's fascinating that Freeze Pops was the moral compass of the show <laughs> and told Will Kane to not say something, and I had forgotten about it. So By the way, I'm always... glad you did because I would have. Yeah, yeah would've. Will is quick to just say words. <laughs> he knows he probably shouldn't say. Well, a technically, a Rod said them in the written form, literary, if you will. It was a strategy. <laughs> it was a strategy. So there was there was birth control. Stra- you just like there was three though. Yes, there was a third one. I can't remember what the third one is. I, I mean, love it. I love that he had notes. By the way, it also it wasn't. Did, it honestly makes even for the most disturbed person, it doesn't make any sense. It'd you know what like else I like saying, about it? Should I murder someone? <laughs> pros cons, and then you zoom back in camera three. Like, did you see Rosillo had a murder pro con list on a blue card? But here's my favorite thing: it wasn't its own dedicated page. No, there was other stuff. <laughs> it wasn't at the top of the page. It was in the lower right hand corner at a diagonal angle, as though it was just off the top of his head. Oh yeah, I need to think about my pros and cons on murdering someone. <laughs> All right, first Google response: What possible reason could A Rod have for writing birth control in his game notes? It said birth control, baby. I think it says baby, and then the other one is the strategy. So baby, one of the options were baby. go for it. Like just- Okay, but who would need to really break it down that way? Who would need to go, okay, if, tell you say, who. someone's A-Rod. pregnant, right? You go, okay, pregnant. What do we got here? All right, we got, we got birth control. Okay, now if I don't go birth control route, What's option two here? Well, I have What's option two? That's well, all right, baby. so that would mean life form, reproduction. All right, we're going to call that baby. That's two. <laughs> yeah, that's the, like, no, no, I no, get the last one. Don't stop, because right. the last one's when he reached real genius. Because okay. he goes, there's one option. Right, well, there's then one the fork in the road, I go this way. Still oh, feel, still but no one thought good. about this. <laughs> Bit of a roulette roll. Yeah, let's. Uh, that's the wild right. card roll. Yeah, we'll right? put that one three. <laughs> call that. Who knows? The other page, it could have been ranked two. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to move it behind baby. It's going to be behind. <laughs> like, you wrote down baby. 
you wrote down baby. And I want so desperately for it to be this huge joke that A-Rod is pulling over on the rest of us. I mean, the first Google result, and I know it's kind of last week, but it just made me think about it as the camera pans back in. And I'm going, you know, like, I, luckily I do not have murder notes here in the studio for me. Let me see. Murder will, <laughs> midway through this segment, murder will, pros, pros. better show. More, <laughs> more first take hits. Cons, jail, question mark? Right. <laughs> Although, public figure, many suspects. Eliminate same age white guy with better hair. Opinion guy. <laughs> you know? So, All right. Actually, I just actually, wrote Actually, I think down. we should come down with the pros. You might have just done a perfect list. I don't know. There's more. <laughs> God, I feel for A-Rod, by the way, on this, too. Do you? Yes. I don't. How do you? Wait a minute. Well. The camera catching that? Yeah, I guess so. But in a way, man, are you serious? Are you serious? Don't you want to know what was on the next page? I want to know all of it. Like, has anybody asked him about this stuff yet? Somebody has to have asked him. The first, the first headline on Sports Illustrated, what possible reason could A-Rod have for writing birth control in his game notes? Again, that was last week's news, so we'll move on from it. No better way to brighten someone's special day than 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order a dozen Gabara daisies for only twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get a free vase. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Last night, the Preds, Headed to the Stanley Cup final, and everybody's a Preds fan. I couldn't figure out what seemed to be more. Like, I get the Bachelorette what are we tweets. About here? Is this lacrosse? No. Oh, hockey. Are you not a hockey? Oh, that's right. You like the stars there for a bit, but since Madonna, why is everybody a Preds fan? I had no idea. Am I alone on this? Everyone is on the Preds bandwagon. You kind of like them, and you're a St. Louis girl. What's that so all So I can't cheer for them because they bounce the blues, but I'll tell you, I've been to a Preds game, and it was a meaningless game. They were playing a known a team that didn't, you know, wasn't in contention, and it was one of the single best sporting events I've ever been to. Wow. Big statement. Do you think calling them Preds is, um, is that acceptable? Is that okay? You seem to have a problem with it, a big like problem. It. it just rings wrong, Preds. You just keep saying it. Preds. Predators, Predators is better. It's not too much. It's not too much to ask. Predators. I have a, I have a problem with Michelle's answer. What, like, why was it so great? I don't understand. Well, when you're in Nashville, all the bars are on the street, Broadway, and it's basically like a tunnel that leads to Bridgestone Arena where the Predators play. Thank you. And it's just this incredible party atmosphere. And in between periods, you have a live band that plays. It's just, it's really, really fun. It's like, a a, it's like a party. Do you have a problem if the NHL champion is from Nashville? Are yes. we past that? Yeah, major problem. Yeah. I think all the franchises should be in Canada. <laughs> Except for like a couple. We can keep Beantown, Detroit, Rangers. I guess the Devils. Detroit. Did you say that already? Yeah, Detroit can stay. Blackhawks can stay. The Kings can stay because those guys, although Manhattan Beach realty prices would go down, so they can have the Kings, get them out of there. You know, the state of Tennessee has no pro championships. That makes sense. Titans? Kinda. Yeah, Titans. Grizzlies? Grizzlies. Preds. Preds. <laughs> Did you notice the tweets? What was the most surprising Predators fan tweet? So, like, Herb Street moved down there. That's fine. Um, you know, my neighbor and her husband, who pitched at Vandy, the Bushmans, they were they were at the playoffs recently, like cheering them on. Frauds. Am I alone on this? Do you not follow yes, anyone? Yes, no, I'm, I think you're getting all the clues. The Predators. You're talking about the National Predators. I expect the National Predator fans out there. Not really, probably. But I respect that you're trying to do this, but it's hockey, man, and it's Nashville. It Field is. Yates? Field Yates is from Boston. Why Why is he a Predators fan? Field Yates tweets, bucket list item, attend a Predators playoff home game. Yeah, all right. I think this is like being into, uh, you know what I think this is? It's like Just being lot into of lot the, of, lost a lot of respect. Uh, Mumford and Son, before Mumford and Son got their Grammy. That's what people are doing. They're getting on the Predators thing, the Ovid brothers, you, you know, little hipsterish. Are the Predators hipsterish? Yes. Herb Street did move there, so that's a little different. And this other girl that was tweeting about it, she dates one of them, so that kind of makes sense. Hmm. All right, coming up next, why Will Kane thinks most of you are apologists for NBA players and not mean to them.